the scope of paramedic practice has expanded to involve complex clinical interventions and patient management in the pre-hospital setting, which could potentially lead to adverse clinical outcomes and compromise patient safety. Therefore, clinical reasoning and decision making are core competencies to obtain as a paramedic. These skills allow a clinician to make informed and confident decisions to provide safe patient-centred care. This presentation will define clinical reasoning, highlight its importance in the pre-hospital environment and discuss the theories on how novice practitioners can develop clinical reasoning skills. Furthermore, I will discuss how I will incorporate clinical reasoning into my future practice as a paramedic. According to Trowbridge, Rensick and Durning, 2015, clinical reasoning is the process by which a healthcare professional interacts with the patient and environment to collect and interpret patient data, weigh the risk and benefits of actions, and understand patient preferences to determine a working diagnostic and therapeutic management plan to improve a patient's well-being. Higgs, Jones, Loftus and Christensen, 2014, identifies that clinical reasoning involves taking the best judged action based on a specific context and encompasses ethical conduct and collaboration with the patient. Clinical reasoning is a decision-making process associated with clinical practice, which is central to professional autonomy. Paramedicine is a profession highly reliant on the autonomy of practitioners to make clinically sound, evidence-based, patient-centred decisions, highlighting the importance of paramedics to develop this skill early in their career. The role of paramedics, according to the QAS 2018, is to assess and prioritise a patient's immediate and definitive health care needs, deliver appropriate and immediate care, and organise provisional or definitive care in a time-efficient manner. Clinical reasoning underpins these capabilities of a paramedic. With the progression of paramedicine to involve the management of a wide variety of cases, from low acuity through to life-threatening illnesses and injuries, and even multi-casualty incidents, Clinical reasoning is an essential skill to minimise diagnostic errors and ensure patient safety. Therefore, developing clinical reasoning skills early in the profession is essential and should be further refined throughout their career through knowledge, experience and clinical practice. The complexity of clinical reasoning is based on the context of the situation, which can challenge paramedics' decision making. In a pre-hospital environment, there are many factors that can complicate the decisions of paramedics. For example, paramedics attend various locations which can lead to a less controlled environment compared to an in-hospital setting. Furthermore, patients are limited in equipment and resources, including additional clinicians and diagnostic equipment, which means that patients' medical history and description of events of, are of high importance, but can be incomplete due to poor historians or even language barriers. Another factor in pre-hospital clinical reasoning is the high acuity time critical patients where decisions need to be made quickly and accurately to best benefit the patient. This further highlights the criticality of clinical reasoning and decision making in the pre-hospital setting. Therefore, paramedics should continually expand their knowledge and reflect on experiences to improve upon these skills in order to avoid clinical errors and adverse effects events in patient conditions. Clinical reasoning and paramedic practice can prove challenging due to lack of patient information, multiple comorbidities, end-of-life decisions, as well as transport options. As the scope of paramedic practice is expanding, paramedics are expected to have a knowledge for a variety of clinical presentations, including paediatrics, obstetrics, mental health, medical emergencies, and traumatic injuries, as well as minor presentations. The majority of the calls made to emergency services are low acuity cases. With the increased pressures on the emergency departments and ramping at hospital, paramedics may need to utilise their clinical reasoning and decision making skills to ensure the patient has access to an alternative and more appropriate means of health services, for example, their GP or local pharmacy. Additionally, some of the jobs are simple lift assists However, paramedics should use their clinical reasoning skills to determine if the patient is safe to be left at home. This can be challenging in the ageing population due to multiple comorbidities or the patient's prescribed medications, for example, blood thinners. Therefore, clinical reasoning skills are essential to consider differential diagnoses and collaborating with the patient to make the best possible decision in a specific situation. Teaching clinical reasoning and decision-making skills to novice practitioners can prove challenging, 
yet it is essential in order to minimise diagnostic errors and adverse events to ensure patient safety. Developing clinical reasoning skills encompasses acquiring a broad knowledge base, utilising communication skills and examination techniques to gather information and be able to synthesise the information to make treatment and transport decisions. By evaluating patient outcomes and reflecting on the clinical decision-making process, Novix practitioners can cons consolidate these skills. There are many theories and tools that focus on the process of developing clinical reasoning skills, including the dual processing theory and the clinical reasoning cycle. The dual processing theory hypothesizes that clinicians utilize two types of cognitive processes to aid in decision-making, known as System 1 and System 2 approaches. System 1 is based on the clinician's intuition and past experiences. This approach is more likely to be used in experienced clinicians, especially in time-critical patients as it involves pattern recognition and heuristics. This is often used rapidly and occurs through unconscious cognitive reasoning processes. System 2 approach is a much slower, deeper thinking and more analytical process used by novice practitioners to ensure the best action is taken for optimal patient outcomes. Depending on the complexity of the case, clinicians tend to utilise both processes. In practice, when experience and knowledge are more solidified, pattern recognition is more commonly used. However, there is an emphasis placed on the analytical approach when teaching clinical reasoning skills. This can be achieved through tools such as a clinical reasoning cycle. According to Levitt Jones et al. 2018, the clinical reasoning cycle allows the healthcare professional to undertake a systematic approach to facilitate decision making. The cycle involves eight steps, which are taking the patient's situation into consideration, collecting and then processing the information, identifying the issue or problem and establish goals to rectify the problem, implement, implement interventions, evaluate the outcome and reflect and develop new learning. This cycle is best used by novice practitioners when learning to develop clinical reasoning skills. Clinical reasoning can be best taught through exposure and experience to a wide variety of cases, pathophysiologic knowledge, and key features of clinical conditions to enhance pattern recognition. University education provides the basis of clinical knowledge and the classic signs and symptoms to observe in particular health conditions. However, it is through clinical experience such as placement or scenario-based learning that novice practitioners can practice and develop clinical reasoning and decision-making. Reflecting and debriefing on scenarios and cases can furthermore aid in the development of these skills as it slows down the clinical decision-making process um, used by encouraging novice practitioners to verbalise their reasoning. Reflecting on my own clinical practice as a student, I have noticed that my clinical reasoning skills have progressed from my first year of studying paramedicine to now as I am transitioning to a novice practitioner. Through on-road experience and increased clinical knowledge and skills, my confidence in clin clinical reasoning has improved to allow me to make decisions um, appropriate regarding patient presentations. In my first year of studying, I noticed that during scenario-based training in university, I would tend to jump to conclusions in regards to treatment and not completely and holistically assess the patient's health needs. Clinical reasoning is not only built upon knowledge, but also clinical and communication skills in order to work collaboratively with the patient to identify their health needs and then implement the most appropriate course of action. After reflecting and debriefing on cases, both on road and in scenarios, I learned to verbalise my clinical reasoning process to allow my mentors to understand what I'm thinking in regard to treatment and transport decisions and also involve my patient in their healthcare decisions. This has allowed me to take a more holistic patient-centred approach to healthcare and enable me to make appropriate clinical decisions. As I progress in my career as a paramedic, I will con continue to improve my clinical reasoning skills through developing my knowledge through evidence-based practice and gaining clinical experience, enabling me to make timely, appropriate and confident decisions. As I transition to a novice practitioner, I will continue to reflect on my practice, which will enable me to draw from past experiences when attending similar cases in the future. This will allow me to make rapid decisions, especially in life-threatening and time-critical cases. In conclusion, 
Clinical decision-making skills are essential in the paramedic profession in order to make timely and safe patient-centred decisions. The expanding scope of practice and level of autonomy that paramedics uphold highlights the importance and relevance of developing and maintaining sound clinical reason and decision-making abilities. Therefore, it is important that students and novice practitioners learn to reflect on experiences, expand their knowledge and communication skills to allow for thorough assessments of patients and provide patient-centred care.